everyone. Uh, this paper is a joint project, basically, uh, between myself and uh, two uh, other colleagues, uh, Joachim Winterwall and Rulia Fredriksen. I'll try to present what we have done last year, and we discuss it afterwards. So the aim of this paper, as you can see, is to discuss the sacrificial marshes in southern Norway. And I will uh, focus mainly on the latest investigations that we have with the site of Gulmira or Golden Marsh in English. So before I get to discuss what we will do, uh, what is the definition of sacrificial marshes? So I refer to it here as to intentionally scattering objects on the edge of the marshlands due to ritual purposes. So what is mutual between all these marshes that we find in southern Norway? The sacrificial, sacrificial marshes are topographically quite similar and often in the form of concave recesses in the landscape. And the landscape that I refer to, it's not 1,000 meters or 2,000 meters. We are talking about more or less 160, 170 meters of sea level. The recesses are uh, sheltered from the outside by elevation in the landscape, usually in all directions. Centrally located on the sacrificial sites are marshes or small bodies of water enclosed by marshes. The places are perceived as closed, hidden, and shielded from the outside world. Common to the majority of the locations are single deposit objects on the edges <coughs> of the marshes. So the region that I'm talking about uh, is, as you can see here, in the southern edge of Norway. And we will be one county in the 1st of uh, January 2020. And we, instead of call it the West Agder, so it will be the Agder region. That's why I'm talking about Agder now. In the coastal health of Agder, there are a number of sacrificial sites in conjunction with topographically defined marshlands. The sites are scattered across a belt of the huts seven to 10 kilometers inland from the Agder coast and situated at a height of 160 to 180 meter above sea level. Comparing the data gathered from the finds, the sacrificial objects so far found appear to have a chronological center in the Neolithic and Bronze Age between 3800 and 500 BC. Finds without context. Well, let us see what we are talking about. The objects found are usually not a result of archaeological investigations, but found due to landowners work with the cultivations of the area, uh, area or drainage of, of marsh, much of the data gathered does thus come from randomly submitted findings. In 2018, the West Agder County Council had the opportunity to investigate one of these sacrificial sites. And I just have to clarify this issue. In Norway, we have a system that the county councils, we have the authority to uh, investigate, to register the sites, to do the surveys, and to uh, protect them, but we are not allowed to excavate them. When we decide that it will be excavated, then it's another institution, which is the cultural history of um, uh, University of Oslo, who has the responsibility to come and excavate the site. That's why all what I'm talking about is the results of surveys, not excavations. This presentation will focus on the results from the archaeological investigation of Gulmira, or the Golden Marsh, at the Hageland in the municipality of Mandal. Before I start talking about our sites, I just want to, to see some of the objects that we found in the nearby marshes in the vicinity of our site. So the first one, this one is from, is a sickle from Lindesnes, which is nearby county. And this one is a dagger from the same county. And this chisel is from, from the same county, whereas this sword of copper is from Lindesnes. And the, the distance that we are talking about is more or less around 10 kilometers, not more than that. 
why actually we start working with this project. Thanks to the Department of Transport or the new sister company that we call it uh, New Roads in Norway, we had a project where we will investigate the new uh, motorway that they will build between Kristiansand and all the way to uh, Stavanger in the west. And this part that we will investigate is around 107 kilometers, and the width of this motorway is somewhere from 200 to 500 meters. So we are talking about enormous uh, area that we have to excavate or actually investigate. So all the red uh, lines that you see, it's done. Now, this year we are working with this part, and next year we will continue quest. So the Hargeland area that we uh, will talk about is a few kilometers to the north of the city center of Mandal. And this is how it looks like. So what is special about this area, now I will tell you. Uh, the landowner of this house built a new house in the 30s. And when he built his house, he found some uh, nice objects on the edge of this marsh, because th th all this area was actually marshland. He did the drainage and he penetrated the entire area by building this road. So all what we see uh, up to today, after almost 80, 90 years, that all this area still very wetty, that I will not go uh, voluntarily there, to be honest with you. Uh, this area is a little bit better, but again, still wetty. Another object which was found was here. Then we have a grave mound here. We have another grave mound there. And all these red spots are automatically protected grave mounds that we found recently. I will talk about them afterwards. So these are the objects that were found uh, in the 30s, as you can see. And according to typology, they are dated back to the uh, Mesolithic of Norway, around 6,350 to 3,800 calibrated years before present. Here we can see the location of the grave bonds. So this is actually the marsh area that we are talking about. And here we have a removed uh, grave mound. When they built this house, they removed this grave mound. The same is here with the stone that I was talking about. The second one is here. Removed grave mound here, whereas these are from, uh, still there. This, this part is Usually, uh, we found more cooking pits and activities uh, dated back to the Iron Age. So this one is a little bit modern uh, in comparison to what we are talking about. But it, it, it was quite interesting because we found it on the edge of the marshes. All these um, um, points that you see here, like stars, are objects that we found during the latest ex uh, investigations. And this spot, if you remember, I'll talk about it later, it's the pollen sample that we took. Uh, as I told you, we do not excavate, we are not allowed to excavate, but we are allowed to do some surveys. And we use uh, bulldozers in Norway to remove the topsoil in order to see the layers <coughs> beneath the topsoil, otherwise we never finish what we are doing. So that's why here you can see the remains of the small uh, investigations that we have, we have done in the entire area. Some of the mounds, as you can see, one of them is here, one of them is there, and we are looking toward the marshes in this particular area. So they are always positioned at a higher elevation and overlooking uh, at the marshes from all directions. So this is the area that we are talking about. We have another grave mound here, believe it or not. And we have a third one or a fifth one, actually, that was removed here. Some of the cooking pits that we found, as you can see here, in the excavation. And we wanted to try to investigate a little bit of these grave mounds to see what kind of material they were built of, because either they are accumulation of stones or accumulation of uh, soil. So we we did open this area just to see what kind of 
uh, grave mounts we have. And when we start excavating this area, which was quite okay to the, to the driver of the bulldozer to use his machine here, otherwise he couldn't come here, we found uh, some uh, objects which were most likely thrown from the top of the hill. These are some of the objects that we found. And the name of the area is Gulmera, which indicates that someone has found a golden object in that area, but we don't know anything about it. And usually in Norway, they are very, uh, um, they, they like to use the name. So the name has a tradition, has history. Why they are using it? Because someone definitely has found a golden object. In order to clarify the issue, we wanted to know what kind of activities we have in the area. So we took a pollen sample. The depth of this pollen sample was a curve of 520 centimeters, and the results were quite interesting. So the latest results from the pollen analysis indicate that agrarian activities did not occur before 800 AD. So we are talking about the beginning of the Viking Age in Norway. So all the other areas, more than four meters of accumulation of pollen, it's natural pollen, which indicates that no one has used or exploited this area for uh, grassing purposes or for agrarian purposes. Why on earth they will come and position all their grave mounds in that area? Why they put their objects and throw it there? So here are the results of the pollen analysis. I have not so much time, so I'll try to go <coughs> a little bit faster. Uh, to my conclusion. So the ritual activities in southern Norway were positioned nearby marshes throughout millennia. Some of these marshes are located along the coast, whereas many others are scattered across a belt in the uplands. Why people did use the marshes as ritual sites? Ancient people had respect to marshes, the unknown world. The marshes are dangerous and no one can cross them. Well, yes. They are taboo territories. Yes. You can't use boat. You can't swim. And you can't go. So basically, you're stuck. In this regard, the marshes could function as a ritual territories where the ancient people could communicate with their gods without any disturbance. If someone has thrown an object in the marshes, no one will dare to touch it or remove it. So it will remain there until a bloody archaeologist come and pick it up. So my recommendations are uh, archaeological activities in the southern Norway did not give enough attention to marshes areas, usually due to time consuming and inefficiency in conducting surveys and excavations. Dangerous, we don't have enough time, it costs a lot of money, etc., etc., etc. Based upon our new experience, we do recommend our colleagues to be more concerned when it comes to marshes and provide the necessary skills and expertise to fulfill such activities, particularly when we have a large project and we have enough money to conduct such kind of activities. The edges of the marshes are usually accessible and are safe to use a bulldozer to remove the topsoil before conducting the survey. Here we go. Thank you.